and for Ville. But yeah, I am excited to watch you guys right here, right now. Ness versus Duck Hunt. And we're starting over on, of course, TNC. Very, very nice stage for both characters. I mean, both of them are kind of looking for the same thing. We're definitely looking for some setups with our objects here, or our projectiles. Of course, Ness with PK Fire as disposal, and Duck Hunt with that cannon clay pigeon. Yeah, both of them, like, really, really thrive in advantage. Of course, you know, Ness having the PK Thunder as well as all of those, like, huge, long-lasting hitboxes. And, yes. you know, Fawn mm -hmm. being able to work with, you know, just build Mario Maker stages with the, uh, <laughs> with the you know, the gunman, the, mm -hmm. the, the can. All right, so right now, just a little bit of a percent lead for Fawn, but down tilt. All right, so they had, what just happened was that because how far spaced out that down tilt push Fawn, they actually had time to pull out that frame one can mm -hmm. to interrupt the, uh, the down tilt into a devastating, you know, four smash or something like that. Yeah, and that's why I feel like this matchup is not too bad for Duck Hunt because, you know, yep. Ness is an incredibly, like, combo-oriented character. So, you know, being able to have that frame one escape option with the can is going to be hugely instrumental. But now it has to worry. Oh, and I didn't even think about that, but the, the, the can as well, being able to threaten uh, Gak from not using any of the classic, like, Ness edgeguard options with yeah. uh, like Yo-Yo or PK Thunder because you're just a sitting duck for haha <laughs> funny pun for the can. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah you're completely right if, if the guy isn't constantly moving and at the same time being aware of the possibility of can or clay coming out he is absolutely susceptible to being caught off guard with the can just like that you're trying to get into some magnet movement, trying, I think, to absorb maybe a clay pigeon, but instead can came out um, and just ate that explosion. And there's that first stock. Finally taken from Gat. And hopefully, Fawn can make this a little more of an even matchup for herself for themselves. Yeah, and I mean, I do want to point out that, you know, what I was saying before about the can is in Gak's mind because we saw in the, the previous interaction, Gak did go for the PK Thunder off ledge because he noticed that can was on the complete other side of the stage. Yep. Like, okay, I get to play my game now. I get to play what Ness wants to play. Ooh. Oh, there is a clay pigeon once again trying to come out just to interrupt the, the, the constant barrage of PK fire, but you're not getting rid of that yo-yo. That yo-yo fuck is so, so active. And the big drift from Gak uh, weaving right around that forward smash attempt from Fawn. Gonna see Clay Pigeon in a back air. That will be taking it. Fawn bringing things to e a dead even game pretty much mm -hmm. here on game one. I'm fully fitting this set to go to game three, absolutely. With how talented both our play these players are, especially Gat, first of all. Hi, Gat, first of all. <laughs> especially Gat coming over, and we are seeing some of our top players go against, you know, very, very well known uh, Ness player. I'm excited to go to game three. I want all of us to go. Y'all all better go to game Please. three. Please. Please, Honestly, I'm excited. I'm strapped in for a long night. Long night of game threes. Yeah, again, again, I think we're seeing uh, Gats use, or at least attempting to deal with all of these clay pigeons and these cans. Kick PK thundering at the stage, then there goes I can. Now Gats able to actually play the game he's wanting to play, but there's clay pigeon once more into the back air. That recovery by Gak was so good, hitting it the perfect spot on the Town and City main platform to get the head bonk and still be able to do a second PK thunder, but just going down right there, I think that was to a neutral air, it looked like. We'll see right now. Oh, I think it was back here. Let's see. There's the yeah, can explosion in the into. Uh, yep. All right, yeah, that was back air. But yeah. <laughs> I love the way that Duck Hunt just like grins when he Ooh. takes out a can. It's so funny. Dog with human teeth. Why? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> I never thought about it. I'm... Duck Hunt doesn't even have human teeth. He's got like molars in the front. <laughs> <laughs> like spooky. I didn't think about that. Would that make Duck Hunt a vegetarian? Isn't he an omnivore? If he maybe has his canines. But he's just got I the mean, square teeth. Aren't dogs? Dogs are omnivores, kind of technically. Yeah. Omnivore? yeah. Like, I mean, I guess they, like, they aren't actually. They can't have a high protein diet like cats can, but they they yeah they're technically quote unquote omnivores. Dogs enjoy a salad every now and then. This is true. true. They love a little crunchy lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, enough lore. <laughs> enough, enough dog facts. Here we go <laughs> over on facts. Small Battlefield. <laughs> uh, small Battlefield started right off. We're already at a pretty 
This is, a, this is a high level game right now. I'm so excited. It's hype set. Hype set right now. Absolutely. And I think this is another like stage that I think will be is pretty even for these uh, particular characters, but in a very volatile way. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because the way that both of these characters just love having advantage, and they're right there once again, Fawn not having the can available, but because these characters like love advantage so much, and the, the small battlefield platform layout like really uh, amplifies that for both of these characters, Fawn gets a new set of platforms to set up those obstacle courses, whereas you know Ness just gets so much more opportunity for like PK fire shenanigans just like that. Already almost lapping Fawn in percentage. I definitely uh, genuinely appreciate Gat's constant use of uh, PK fire in right now than he did in the first game. And honestly, in previous tests we watched earlier on stream, he is using it as a way to stuff out Can to stall um, to stall Fawn and, and pulling out Clay Pigeon. They aren't able to do anything whenever PK fire is being thrown at them, and I love that Gat has has that awareness and is using it more often in this matchup. And there, once again, Fun choosing to only threaten with just, like, footsies and a, a down tilt. Not really able to set up any of these, like, setups that were, uh, that they're known for. Ooh, okay. Again, the awareness from Gat is literally, like, exponential. Because now they're, they're actually noticing Cans on the other side of the stage. I can absolutely go in and charge Fun with everything I have. And... Actually, use the can to you know limit the down to threat, but we are sacrificing a lot of our percentage for these canned uh, escapes. Yep, F tilt not going to be doing things quite yet, and the can not placed well enough to be able to prevent Gak wow. from coming back on the stage. And you got hit by the the Wi-Fi classic. You're up in the up in the stratosphere. Here comes a little PK Thunder Orb. Mm -hmm. It's threatening. <laughs> All right, Gats, Bandura, uh, FD, and Kalos, and Fawn is wisely choosing to go back to TNC. Um, yeah, I agree with this. That's because that's where they won uh, the first game on. Mm -hmm. Start battle. Hunt. And we're also sticking with the, the, the Duck Hunt, of course. Um, as we know, Fawn does have an array of characters, but I think they're most comfortable with Duck Hunt in this matchup. That's because I think Ness and Duck Hunt aren't like awful to deal with, like we, like we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. um, as Duck Hunt. You, you're both kind of looking for the same the same thing, you know? Um, the same setups, the yeah. same trick, the same bait. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like this particular matchup is just like, the, the momentum is so important. Like, I, I definitely feel like the first stock is going to be huge in this game three. But like, because both of these characters just love having that advantage like it can be like a real steamrolly type of matchup yeah you're completely right it's really just, just projectiles all over the stage right now but right now we have no platforms in our way and that should that Ooh. should be allowing duck hunt to set up whatever he really wants um with the gunman and the clay pigeon and the cans on trying but, to yeah. weave their way around that platform like please keep the pk thunder away from me but it, <laughs> <laughs> Dread it, run from it. PK yeah. Thunder arrives all the same. It's that PK Thunder and that PK Fire. And again, Yo Yo catching Fawn off into that ledge. Such an active hitbox. He'd be so weary of this because it goes around at some point. So you can be, you gotta time your roll if you're going to roll, of course. Uh, so, so meticulously. And one thing I really feel like as this set has gone on. Okay, yeah. That's huge. Great respecting, <gasps> but not able That's to. That's a small. That's a short. Tiny baby boy. He's so little. <laughs> Oh my god! I saw the vision, but I, I, I thought that Fawn might have gone for a, a F throw, uh, F throw, F smash um, towards Gak. But no, it just. Instead, trying to get so the little. scoop, but his, his giant head was still nowhere near the hitbox of the up smash. Trying to neutral air their way through the PK Thunder, and yeah, this is what I was saying before is, you know. Gak is really just taking this momentum and running with it. Maybe this Huge. time, but no, Town and City Blast Zones. Biggest thing is, of course, that was the can setup that Fawn was going for. Both of them in question on the ledge and in the center stage where Fawn did back throw into the can. Doesn't, didn't take stock quite yet, but at least they had the, op the, the option to set up that can on the ledge and stuff out Gak's recovery. So now Fawn has a little bit of rage going on as well, so we could be seeing a really good Hopefully, uh, Clay Pigeon combo with the up air. 
And there we go. Starting to see, I was, you know, thinking before, you oh know, we really haven't seen Fawn use uh, Can coming back from ledge uh, very often. And I feel like Gak's been, you know, pretty comfortable with being able to use, that was gross, being able to use, like, the yo-yo or the PK Thunder while Fawn is trying to come back to stage. Which I really feel like he, he really, you know, wouldn't be in a matchup like this. Oh. All right, set up the Can. Yep. I have no idea how you can control can like that at the same time. That's different. Ooh, all right, Gak. Can is threatening on that on that center stage. Gak, why is he just choosing to go back to the ledge instead of PK thundering all the way to the center stage? And there's another back uh, back air, but not taking it yet because these pop these blasts that we opted for. Are you serious? Oh. Yeah, I think you know Gak was in a position where he would have been. He was just using the PK thunder to threaten the ledge. And the can actually, you know, just kind of expedited that. 173 now on Gak. Fawn really needs to find this stock quickly. I feel like, you know, one more interaction puts Fawn at death's door, pretty much. Or potentially yeah. could be death's door. You're completely right. Once Fawn is in, in Gak's little kid hands, it's it could really be a, a close uh, end of a stock. Oh, oh right there, okay. no! Not getting the PK ten that, that he was looking for, but now uh, Gat has, has excellent control of center stage right now. And honestly, finally avoiding a lot of these cans. And uh, even Fong getting hit by their own can right there is now what they're really opting for him. And they can't have this right now. Setting up Gunman on the ledge. And of course, there goes that can once more. Into forward throw, into clay pigeon, double okay. kick, no, into back air. We got momentum on the board. S slowly bringing it back as we as as the match goes on. We are at the two and a half minute mark almost. Can just delayed Can a was little facing bit too much. the wrong way, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Fawn not able to capitalize off of that grab. Dash deck almost taking it. Woo! Oh, your can! The can! It be your can. Excellent, excellent hype set. Excellent set. Oh my goodness. Um, look, look at this, look at this. Yeah, see, dash attack almost taking it. I, got, I was getting scared. I was like, I'm gonna get dash attack, but then it was just, it was Fun literally. just exploded. Can. Goodbye. Multiple hits, it just explodes. Neutral air sending it right back at them. But yeah, a yeah, very, a very well played set from from both players. Great like, ad adaptation was... from Gekta as well. Between game one and game three on the same on the same mm -hmm. stage. Honestly, it's between beautiful. game one and game two, there was like oh, completely know. different games. It's a completely different person playing. It was a it's beautiful, beautiful array of can uh, co of conversions, beautiful like use of PK fire. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's just beautiful.